Welcome fellow X-Men fans, Solid Dave Snake here, bringing you a very special Throwback Thursday video review today in light of my current reviews on the brand new X-Men Marvel Legends series. My next review for it was going to be Cable from the series, so I thought it would be fun to take this time and go back all the way to 1993 from Toy Biz's X-Force series and take a look at an alternate version of Cable off of that line. And just like how the X-Men had their own run of figures back in the 90s, X-Force had its own series as well, which spawned a couple series. Uh, which was actually surprising that one of the side comics could spawn that many characters, but they made a lot of characters in it, and they did fill the gaps in that X-Force series with some of the X-Men characters. Like, oh, they had a lot of the... Uh, main X-Men villains in there like Pyro and Blob and such, but of course they were villains to X-Force as well. But uh, to get back onto these figures, they made a lot of cables. And I actually have the original Toy Biz cable, which was based off of Rob Leinfeld's original uh, first appearance cable in New Mutants. So one day I'll do a review on it, but since this is a alternate version of cable in the comics... I thought I would show off the futuristic version that they made from Toy Biz back in the day for Cable. So let's get uh, this new Marvel Legends to the side until we review him the next day. And get this old Cable up here. And he is really neat. I actually had the two-part miniseries that this look was uh, really based off of when he was with the six-pack in the future. But uh, he comes with uh, some pretty neat accessories here. One being this, um, oh, I don't know if you call it a laser cannon or machine gun. It looks like it looks like a laser gun. In the comic books, it would shoot lasers. But I have these bullets attached here on it, which is kind of neat because the new cable, he does come with this rifle that you can take the bullets in and out of the back. So that's pretty cool and kind of a neat coincidence. But I'll get that handgun off here. Give you a quick look at it. I actually don't remember if this originally came with it, to be honest with you. <laughs> this might have been from some other figures I had, but it does have a feeding mechanism in there like it was meant to be put in there. So that's pretty neat. And it looks good with Cable. He's always heavily armed. And he does have this headset as well, which actually plugs in in this hole on his right-hand shoulder. Let me pull that out, give you a closer look at it. And if I remember correctly in the comic book, I thought this actually shot out lasers as well. He was always armed to the gill. Cable always had tons of weapons. But let's take a close look at him. And the head sculpt is actually really good back from 1993. I mean, not too much paint variation going on here. The white hair and the yellow eye. But besides that, it's just that basic skin tone. Eyebrows are painted a little white. <clears throat> eh, just for comparison, I'll show off this one real quick. Which is actually pretty well detailed. That's how he looked in the comic book as well. Especially the way Rob drew him. But this figure is much more bulky. He was bulky in the comic books. Cable was always a lot bigger than a lot of the other hero characters. But they really made him massive. And I like the way they integrated the bio mesh arm. Coming into his chest area a little bit here and into his back as well kinda gave that ripped shirt appearance he's got pouches and different ammo storage all along his arms and back and legs and he does have this big main shoulder piece on his right shoulder which, in the comic books, I believe a weapon did fit up here. A big shoulder cannon. You can almost see this is the track for it to move back and forth. So 
So this is a really neat older figure. And he always had those big knee guards, big boots. More pouches down on his thighs. And of course the articulation was very limited on these older figures. Just cuts. Cut at the head. Cuts at both shoulders. And cuts down below here, which can't even get up to 90 degrees. But back in the day, this was good articulation. And a single hinge there at the knee. So, pretty standard for action figures back in the 90s. So, alright everybody, I hope you enjoyed this Throwback Thursday on X-Force's Cable. And stay tuned, because tomorrow we'll be having the brand new X-Men Marvel Legends Cable Review. So I'll see you then, everyone.